Tonight, Fix the Country protesters determined to press on with three-day protests as they continue to brace the heavy rains. That's by the police onslaught on day one. But University Teachers here- Association, GJA, and Minority in Parliament all now descending heavily on the police for unleashing terror on peaceful protesters. But even their presence here is still violence upon us because they're restricting our rights. Okay. But as long as we are here, we're going to make the most out of what our democracy allows us to do. So the goal is actually to occupy the streets, to in occupy the forefront, the forefront of jubilance. Yes, we are not there yet. We're hearing from the police tonight as they fight back, refuting claims it assaulted the protesters. See, I'm 25 years. If, if you look at the number of people around me who are older, who don't have a job, and the qualifications they have, you realize that the problems that plague this country are very small. We are live on the ground tonight, speaking to our correspondents of Pitch Camp, all breezing the heavy rains. Top story with Evans Mensa. And Top Story is always brought to you by Vodafone. The Fix the Country protesters are tonight remaining resolute and determined to press on with the three-day protests as they continue to brace the heavy rains despite the police onslaught on day one. University Teachers Association, GJA, the minority in parliament are all tonight descending heavily on the police for unleashing terror on the peaceful protesters. Today, in fact, the leadership of the protesters have been also uh, been meeting with the police hierarchy. We'll bring it a very latest uh, from there. Uh, we've been in that meeting and getting some latest information on this. We'll get you uh, what was discussed and whether some arrangement, some understanding had been reached. The protesters today had wanted to occupy the front pa- frontage of the uh, Jubilee House but were kept at bay by barricades and more than 50 policemen in riot control gear. Now, however, this did not deter them as they continued to sit, sing and dance in the middle of the busy road to, among others, demand an end to corruption, mismanagement of the economy and unemployment. We'll go live to my correspondent, uh, Max Aragba, shortly, about a short while ago, he sent in this piece. It is bad. Yesterday was just Black Thursday. Oh, the police have goofed. The police are wrong on the law. Uh, let's bring in Maxwell now, uh, who's joining us right now from the uh, 37 Military Hospital, just there about because the protesters have been camping there. Hello, Maxwell. Uh, I can hear loud music there, raining still, I can see. What's the update? Hello, Maxwell. Okay. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of activity uh, where Maxwell is. In the studio with me right now is uh, James Aveji who has been covering another angle of this for us today. James, yes. today, the protesters, the leadership, they went to meet the police. Exactly. What happened? So uh, that meeting uh, was led uh, from the side of the protested by Bernard Mona. Uh, he led the delegation of the conveners and the IGP himself led the police hierarchy into the meeting. Now, uh, the uh, uh, compromise is that first the police, especially the IGP, says that uh, as as far as he's concerned, he does not have any evidence of the assault allegations that the protesters have been leveling against the police. They, in fact, one of the protesters who was part of that meeting indicated that he has been punched. He also mentioned that some other members of uh, the protesters who were arrested were slapped. Others were also hit by with some metals. But uh, the IGP says that that did not come to his attention. And so uh, if that comes to his attention, he will initiate investigations into that. Now, the compromise is that uh, 
uh, he has asked the leaders to go back and negotiate with the members uh, of a democracy hub uh, to actually retreat from the exercise they are doing they should go off the street while they come back to renegotiate a proper venue for the uh, picketing because he still maintained that the jubilee house is a security zone and must be kept as such he says they are from their assessment a continuous picketing of the place could compromise its security and so it is expected that the conveners will come back to meet the other uh, conveners in fact oliver baka Voma was not part of that meeting he's a strong leader uh, of the protest and so they are to come back and meet him and the other protesters to uh, negotiate when they will leave the street and then when they will come back to meet with the police and so the promise at the meeting by bernard mona is that they would try and get an answer from uh, uh, the group by close of today and communicate same to the police. Okay, we'll get uh, that uh, update um, when Ben Amona joins us. I want to return uh, to Maxwell Ogba, who is on the ground with the protesters right now. Hello, Maxwell, can you hear me? Hello, Maxwell? Okay. Hello, Maxwell, can you hear me? Hello, Alan. Yes, Maxwell. Uh, what's the latest? It uh, sounds like a carnival atmosphere, but this is make no mistake a protest yesterday we saw the the how difficult it was for some of them what's the update on the ground well, I've there's so much noise in the background i can hardly hear what you're saying um hello then max so if we can move away from the noise let's uh, have a conversation about what's happening on the ground where you are you've pitch camp with them for hours now yeah. Do we still have that heavy police presence and the barricade stopping them from progressing? Exactly, Evan. So the situation has not changed. In fact, the range that started um, about three hours ago rather energized, um, you know, the protesters here and you're still maintaining your presence here. What is difficult now is for the um, personnel of the metro transport and uh, traffic, motor transport and traffic department, NTCD, who are trying to um, deal with the bumper-to-bumper traffic situation that has been created um, by this protest right here in the middle of the road um, in front of the 37 military hospital. Now, the traffic stretches very long kilometers, and that um, I had to pick up something, and I couldn't come back in a vehicle. I had to come back on a motorbike. Even that, it was difficult, you know, getting through here. Many of the protesters are still here, all of them, um, many of them I'm seeing here are wearing their raincoats. Police officers here in their route control here have also not moved an inch. And that's the same thing for the protesters also. Even when it started raining, they stood in the rain, and the rain rather energized them. One of them um, is the German personality, um, if you're a she's, she's drenched to the skin, and she's been in the rain since morning. Um, another lady I spoke to um, said she's protesting um, because she lost her father and mother in the year um, 2020 at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital because there was no oxygen. And, mm. all and, 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 and that story, yeah, and that story, and that story about the no oxygen is one that is resonating with a few people. This is this is a story. And our leaders access quality healthcare outside. They go for checkups and then they come back. While the common people, we are here, our women um, go to the uh, hospitals, they give bed on the floor, there are no beds. Um, when you take your aged parents to the hospital, they are not covered on the NHIS. You get the point. So it is a problem, and that is why I am here. Yeah. And Maxwell, a story like this is just one, but you're also get, gathering that almost everybody there had their own unique reason for being there. Uh, exactly, Evans. Uh, so all of the people I've been interacting with have been giving me various reasons why um, they came here. One gentleman I spoke to, he says he's a national service person, and uh, he tells me that he completed his national service uh, about two years ago, and he's still maintaining his status as a national service person. Why is because he just kind of finds, um, you know, um, a job. And that's the same. That's the same way. Um, that's the same situation also for. And the same personality if you're the why are you here you know why i'm here you guys have asked me questions since i'm here for the people i'm here for a change i'm here to make a change have you seen the motorway what's going on the rain what the rain has caused floods 
people are dying because it's raining, which makes no sense. Like, we want to change in this country. We've not been seeing it, whether it's NDC or MPC. Like, Gabret, yeah, people's mothers, their fathers, their aunties, their kids are dying in hospitals because there's lack of beds. There's no infrastructure. Our school system is failing us. Like, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot that we've been complaining about for years, not just today. And we want to change, and there's no change, you know? So it's like, we're here in the rain protesting and we're going to be here tomorrow we're going to be here every day until we see a change and so the leaders actually want to hear us. the leaders don't really care that's what they showcase all the time you know it's not like they, they, they don't know what's going on they see everything but they just don't care you, you, you've been calling out some persons in the payment industry who yes. wield a lot of influence you think that um, they are tied to lips about what is happening and you want them to open up and speak up about what is happening. Yes, because they talk about it in their bedrooms. They talk about it amongst themselves. They talk about it all the time in, in their homes. So when it's actually time to use the platform and vocalize the things you talk about behind closed doors, you don't. I don't understand why. Do we not all live in Ghana? Are we not all facing the same crisis every day? Do we not all complain about the same bullshit that's happening? But when it's time to actually use the platform for something that matters, you don't. But you want the same people, the same fans that are suffering to come and support you when you need, when you need the support. Mm. It's, it's not right. Do you think things are going to change after this? Not after this, no. But we have to just continue calling for the change. We have to continue mm. demonstrating. We have to fight for the things that we feel is right, and we're going to continue fighting. It's not a one-day thing. It's not a one-day wonder. Mm. It's not a one-day fight. It's a continuous fight that we need to create. Uh, we need to continue to do. So, okay. you know, we have people like Oliver here, who is resilient. Call me on the. And I love his fire. I love his energy. So I hope we have more people who will come and support us. Okay. Okay. Stop being so timid and stop being so scared. Like they're not going to do nothing to us. We have a power, which is our voice, and that's the most we can use, which is our voice. God has given it to us. So, yeah. Charlie. Okay. Evans, uh, initial reaction you got you got from if yeah is what we've been getting from some of the protesters here. Sometimes to the extent that they directly anger to the government officials, we get some part of it because they feel like the, the media is not doing it enough. Uh, uh, to, to project all the uh, issues that are happening. They think that we're maintaining a neutral stance when we're supposed to take a position um, on this. But I have the, I have the convener, it's here's the one south in the background. I have the convener for Fix the Country here, Oliver Barker, former. Let me find out from him. He started this this morning. All the media people are tired. <laughs> what time is this going to end? Well, as you can see, we are getting new and more people coming in. Uh, I think a lot of people are creating work, are coming to replenish our run. It's always been asking for, for Ghanaians to show their citizenship and they are doing it beautifully. Uh, tomorrow, we are calling on those who are not able to join throughout the night today to show up from 10 a.m. tomorrow. From 10 a.m., we all must be here. If you are worried about Ghana time, then sell yourself at 9 a.m. So you get here at 10 a.m., we we'll go again. And even if you get a chance to rest, so we'll continue to go. We notify the police of three days, so we're going to observe all three days. Mm. Now, earlier, I, I asked you what you make of the conduct of the police today. We've not seen any confrontation, you know, whatsoever from the police. None of them is armed. They're just in position, just making sure that there is order. Are you impressed? Yeah, you've been very critical of them. Are you well, I think that the expectation that you have that they will resort to violence is, in fact, indicating of the state of of what we think of them. That we need to applaud them for not killing citizens. We need to applaud them for not uh, attacking citizens. I'm not going to bring down the, the bar for, how, for the kind of police force we need. It's a one-day wonder. We have to keep this up. This is what we've been asking for. But it's important that I stress again that even your presence here is nothing but violence. Because we asked that we were going to be at the bottom of Jubilee House. We are not there. They've blocked us up and so are denying us our constitutional rights. That in itself is unconstitutional. Yes. So even in their refusal or I don't know, uh, not attacking people as we expect them to, they are still denying us of our rights as citizens. Mm. Now, in the last one, uh, the Ghana Police Service released a statement. In that statement, they denied that they brutalized you know, any of the protesters um, yesterday. I'm sure you've seen that letter as well. You've seen well, that statement. A number of media houses have shown it to us. They think it's disgraceful. They think that this idea and this continual route by the by Dan Parade, the IGP, to continue to lie and put up their face lies out to the public cannot continue and sustain itself. At no point, at no point did anybody accuse them and tell them that nobody was assaulted. Are you denying our slave reality? The fact that we can go up at a meeting that we decided to honor as a good faith and continue to steal lies is indicative of an institution that is refusing to learn as a refusing to take accountability and responsibility for his actions. So we are disappointed in him, we are disgusted by his actions. 
that this is the person that has shown very little respect for us and has very little uh, has shown very little uh, to us that he, he wants to respect the truth. Mm. Thanks for speaking to us. Um, so Evan, you have the convener for Protect the Country, um, Oliver Bata-Boma, who has also been here um, since morning together with the protesters. But even as I speak to you, the traffic, the bumper to bumper traffic, it, 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 it's, it's there, it's still going. The traffic is going thicker um, by the minutes, by the hour. And this is creating a lot of discomfort for um, people who are heading home, especially from the central business district and then other parts of the uh, country, uh, other parts of the capital. Some of them who have been peering their heads through windows to see what is happening, I've been interacting with them. Some of them will tell me that although, have been telling that although they did not get a chance to be here because of work or because of other engagement, they think that it is important that um, the people, the protesters, have been allowed to vent and to complain about the many issues that they think need to be fixed here in, um, in this country. What I've also seen, also, um, Evans, is that um, some top police personnel are keeping a presence here. In fact, I've seen two of such vehicles, you know, parked here on the side of the road, on the shoulders of the road, and I'm sure they are giving commands uh, to the men on the ground, ensuring that there is order. So far, so far, we've not witnessed any confrontation uh, here. But the police officers are here in their route control here with their, uh, with their skills, all of them with um, body cameras, fish, and my thoughts within the Ghana police service tells me that this is um, supposed to prevent any kind of brutality um, like what is being alleged and like what we witnessed um, yesterday on the first day of the protest. Do uh, you want to talk? Uh, hi, what's your name? Yeah, um, I'm Kweku. Kweku, you've yeah. been here since morning? Yeah, and I just closed on work and I came here. Okay, yeah. it's good business. Um, why are you here? I'm here as a Ghanaian because number one, the president of this country, Nana Kupuado, did Kumitwaku uh, for uh, demonstration before. He led this country before in certain scenes of demonstration. And we, as citizens of this country, are mandated. But mm. And indeed, as you can see there, as uh, Maxwell has been reporting, many more people are now beginning to join because uh, work is closing, a bit of rush hour, but they're bracing the rings and the traffic to get there. There's a more on this, by the way, because as you, Maxwell has been intimating that the police is very clear today, uh, referring to evidence on whether or not people were assaulted yesterday. Exactly. What was the police's point on this in the statement they issued? Exactly. Hey, hey. So it says, quote, it was established at the meeting that there is no evidence or reported case of assault against the demonstrators according to police records. Therefore, anyone with evidence to the contrary should provide it for investigation. It also says that we would like to assure the public that the police service is dedicated to fostering a democratic environment where citizens' rights are upheld while maintaining the security and stability of the nation. So that's what the statement has been saying. About Let it. me put that to the University Teachers Association of Ghana. Professor Ranford Jampo is a president of UG UTAC. Uh, they've issued a statement uh, today condemning the police actions and they brand it as a blatant abuse of power and extremely dangerous to our burgeoning democracy. Prof, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Hi, Evan. Thanks for having me. You just had the police there say there's no evidence that if you have any evidence that there was brutality, provide it. Well, um, what we know is that there were mass arrests and mistreatment, and some people were detained, um, even including journalists. Some of some had their phones um, seized, and then some were, I think, we were told that um, a BBC reporter um, was just released this morning. And we have the view that... Um, these things are becoming one too many. The right to demonstrate is inalienable, and so uh, it, it, it is worrying that it appears that uh, for some time the police becomes jittery any time a group of people would want to demonstrate. Yes, they may have um, concerns to raise as to where the people wanted to go. Um, the Flagstaff House or the Jubilee House being a security zone and people wanting to occupy the, if the police has concern. I think there are um, peaceful dialogue uh, mechanisms or means through which you can uh, redirect or reroute 
um, the place that um, uh, they want to um, demonstrate. But um, when people are not violating any rule and they are not being lawless, and then there is that kind of mass torture, sorry, mass arrest and mistreatment and all that. I mean, it doesn't uh, I mean, to our quest to uh, mature our democracy. And so we want to condemn such actions in uh, no uncertain terms. It happened yesterday, and I'm sure uh, because we were all raising concern, um, it has led to a kind of civil um, treatment being meted to the demonstrators um, today. We we don't want the, the police. I believe have what it takes to police and to shield and to provide security for demonstrators, particularly those who do not intend to be lawless. And so the idea of quickly wanting to quell every move by demonstrators by resorting to the courts, and if that is unsuccessful, then that. Um, clearly makes them angry and so then they want to at the least at the slightest provocation they want to unleash some um, some some forces you know on demonstrators is absolutely unacceptable and that is what we are saying and, and prof the police's argument is that they were simply enforcing the same rule of law that you just mentioned and that this is a public order question well, it's a public order question, but the same um, rule of law also um, mandates or empowers people who want to express dissent to use demonstration, you know, as a way of expressing dissent. And the Constitution does not mandate uh, the police to restrain them or those who want to, to, to embark on such course of action. They are just merely to be informed. And once they are informed, they are supposed to provide security, okay, for them. But it appears that uh, that, that is how we have become. From 1992 up to now, any time uh, people want to go on demonstration, then the first line of action is that the law enforcement agencies would want to um, um, talk them out of it. If that is not possible, then they want to use the uh, judiciary to frustrate, you know, um, the people who want to demonstrate. We think this is absolutely unacceptable. And like I said, if the police really want to do a professional job, they can they can provide all the guidance and all the policing to demonstrators to ensure that they exercise the right to demonstrate without necessarily also um, violating the rights of other people who are not um, part of the demonstration. They can do that. And I'm sure that um, from today, um, um, when the demonstrators started, they are doing so and doing so well. And so uh, what happened yesterday to our mind was absolutely unnecessary. We cannot, we cannot allow this thing to fester. And I think we have, we have tolerated um, some of these things for far too long. And we are speaking other well-meaning Ghanaians are speaking and we are calling on all other you know, voices of conscience, you know, um, to also speak up against some of these things. So that any time a people feel they want to express dissent, they should be able to do so, particularly if they want to do it within the confines of our law and they do not mean to violate or to, to violate other people's rights. I think they should just be encouraged. That's democracy. Uh, Prof, thank you very much. And that's uh, Professor Jampo there, a uh, UTAG issue in a statement on this. Also today, the Ghana Journalists Association also issued a statement on this particular matter, bringing what they've been saying. But in the last uh, few minutes, uh, there's a statement from the National Security uh, on uh, another aspect of this that is also developing. And I want to bring that uh, to you. And this is a statement that is uh, from the Ministry of National Security. Uh, it says the ministry has taken notice of allegations made in a viral post uh, by Oli a convener of the Fix the Country movement regarding a purported offer of a of one million dollars made to him by the Minister for National Security uh, uh, to compel him to seize his activism. While it is acknowledged that the ministers uh, for uh, national security 
finance and other relevant stakeholders in 2021 uh, engaged the convention, the, the conveners of the Fix the Country movement to listen to their concerns. It must be stated emphatically that no offer of money or appointment uh, was made to persuade the group to end its activism. The allegations made by uh, Mr. Bakavomawa are thus false, unfounded, and a calculated attempt to hoodwink Ghanaians. Uh, this ministry, therefore, challenges him to produce the alleged recording of the said uh, inducement. Meanwhile, the general public is urged to ignore the allegations and treat them with the utmost contempt they deserve. This is from the Ministry of National uh, Security. Now, I ask you, uh, you, you want to go onto our many social media platforms because we're covering this extensively there uh, right now uh, for you. The General Secretary of the uh, Ghana Journalists Association, uh, Kofi Iyebwa, uh, is joining us right now. They've also uh, issued a statement today. Uh, Ms. Iyebwa, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, and, 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 uh, and very quickly, uh, what do you know as far as uh, the number of journalists who are either arrested or assaulted is concerned from yesterday's protest? Um, we, we don't have specific number, but we are spoken to about six of them so far. Six of them. And what's, uh, what, what, what did they say happened to them specifically? What, what were the accounts? So... Uh, they were they were arrested um, a number of them at the 37 lorry station and 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 taken to the Accra Central headquarters and they told us that um, although they were released not too long after arrival um, they they were they were stopped from working and even though they had um, identify themselves, show their ID cards to the police officers who arrested them, they would still not allow them to to do their job. And the reports of some of them were detained overnight and released this morning. Have you verified that? No, we haven't verified that. Uh, those we spoke to yesterday and today uh, were all... Um, let go immediately after they arrived. It was the Metro TV reporter who we understand was was held for a little longer because um, she was taking a video and the, uh, and the police had um, seized her equipment. But for the others, um, they were released about five, eight minutes after arrival. And, and all equipment also have been returned to the journalists and the media houses. Yes, yes. What what does the GJ? What do you want to do about this now? Um, our concern is the manner in which the police went about this whole thing. Um, and it was a demonstration, and our job is to go there and cover the the event happening. And you would expect that once the journalists identify themselves the police will allow them to to work and when um, they were taken to the Accra central um, police headquarters um, some of them told us that the, the, there was a senior officer who came around to say the the journalists were not a target so you are wondering what information or instructions or directives were given to the men on the ground for them to be arresting um, media guys. And if you arrest a person, must you put him in the bucket of a pickup as though he, he was a criminal? And, 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 and the manner they, they went about the whole thing, they, some of them wanted to drive in their own cars to Accra Central Police um, headquarters. So these were guys who were not in any way trying to resist arrest. So all the police could do was to get an officer to sit in their car to escort them there. Rather, they chose to put the journalists in the bucket of a pickup. And after releasing them, they did not bring them back to where they picked them from, but just um, um, let, let them up there. So assuming you didn't have money on you to pick a ride back to tech service to come and pick your own ride, how were you going to go about that? So we think that police were very in, inhumane 
in the manner they went about the work and, and highly unprofessional. Mm. Uh, hey, thank you very much. That's a GJ General Secretary uh, Messi Ebua talking to us about what happened yesterday as it relates to the journalists and and talking about those who were arrested. Mm. Uh, it, it took the intervention we are learning of the IGP himself to get them released. Exactly. So according to Bernard Mona, after all the back and forth and. Uh, uh, getting trying to get lawyers to bail them he had a call from the igp uh, himself saying that in fact he's asked the police on the matter to prepare document for all 49 and release all of them on the spot in fact last night nobody should be kept uh, behind bar to the next day and so uh, bernard mona had to go to the various police stations they were kept and sign all of those documents all 49 of them and get them released and so uh, he confirms that he took the intervention of the igp himself to get them released and the igp at that meeting also promised that he would uh, uh, check with the uh, accra high command so that uh, whatever item have been seized from the protesters being in mobile phone or whatever other gadget will be released to them as soon as possible events okay thank you very much james of virgin this is a story we are keeping a close eye on even as the protest continues today ghana connect is coming up next a quick quiz of me in the studio yeah. we are talking about this this is a conversation that's taken twitter of course now x by storm in fact social media is talking about this and people want to engage the fundamental question we are asking tonight is the right to protest under threat in ghana and we are getting some fascinating responses the poll is still live on x you can join in and for those of you listening you can also join into the conversation on x spaces for an incredible show we have some really interesting minds who are joining some people from outside the country in the advanced democracies where the right to protest is quite more entrenched Evan. so mm. all these guys joining us you can join on x spaces you can send in your messages we are really big on your audience on the or the audience and what they believe what they think about what has been happening and i'm very interested also days. to hear from uh, those who are on x space right now with us on ghana connect who want to contribute um you send us a a, a note in our in our in, in, our, in our inbox, in our join, inbox. FM, join us we'll we will reach we'll out take, yes. phone number and then we'll give you a call right on the show so ghana connect right after this break <laughs> 